<clears throat> where the radiator opening is, okay, and kind of hole floor it. And I was thinking about rolling it in, mm -hmm. but now I'm thinking we should just make a just a lip, a lip that goes all the way around it yeah. and weld it on, because it's like an inch and a half from the radiator. Yeah, I assume that was what we were gonna do initially. Yeah. So I want to I want to capture the height of the radiator. Okay. But we can't go all the way down. Sure. I sure do want to talk about what we're doing. Well, we are, uh, let's see, we're getting the car ready to go for paint still. One of the things we need to do is get, make sure we're all done with the front clip. The front clip's gonna stay here while the car's at paint for the first few weeks so we can finish that up. As far as getting mounted to the car, and the other thing is making the opening for the radiator air to go through. So right now we're, we're gonna cut a hole into the core support and then we'll build a flange out of that. So we're gonna kinda just go through that process right now. You can see what it takes. It's a fairly simple job, not a big deal, but just like anything, it takes time and you gotta make sure everything's straight and, and level and square to start with. And then we'll, uh, we'll get to cutting. Right, Brennan? Now that Brennan's got the hole cut out, we're gonna make a sheet metal flange that goes all the way around the perimeter here. Plus it'll help direct the airflow into the radiator at the same time. So he's gonna, he's gonna shear that up, and then he'll just start tack welding that in all the way around. There's a couple different ways to do it. I think I know which way Brennan's gonna do it. It's usually the opposite way I do it. So that's, that's the, the upper piece there tacked in place. Um, tack every inch or so. And uh, we'll just do the same thing down here, you know, and get it all welded up. Um, putting a lot of tacks in it helps. If you can look closely here, I, I got the pieces lined up on, their, on the corners. So when I go and weld it, I'll have a nice, um, a nice spot to lay in a bit of filler rod. You know, you don't want them stacked right on top of each other because then you got nowhere to put any rod in. And, uh, but this will work, work out really nice. Um, once I sand down the welds, it'll give a nice little radius to it and it'll all look like one piece. So that's what we got right there. So, there was a point in my life when I moved to California, and I, I, I had intentions on opening a shop up there. I decided to go to Bonneville for Speed Week. So up to that point, Bonneville was just kind of like this legend. Uh, it's something I've always kind of heard of. People would talk about it, talk how amazing it is, but I'd never been there, so it had to be done. So I got off work on a Friday, drove to Bonneville, I was just blown away. It's like a foreign planet, really. It's high desert. It's what's left over from an ocean. And that's all you see is salt and mountains. The racers that are there, which are, you know, the, the coolest bunch of people I've ever met. It's a non-corporatized event. If someone sponsors the event, they have say-so on how things are happening. And this, this is not that way. It's, it's all volunteer. They really do it in a way that benefits the racer and also the salt flats. The, the racers themselves 
are, are amazing people. They'll drop everything to help another racer. And I was walking down the staging lanes and there was this, this 34 Ford in gray primer and it had a Minnesota license plate on it. In the staging lanes, staging to you know make a run and it had a, and it had a license plate on it, which doesn't make any sense because race cars don't have license plates. So I had to, I had to introduce myself and talk to the guy and see what the deal was. And um, the owner of the car, his name's Tom, he told me they drove it there from Minnesota. And I talked to the guy in the staging lanes for about an hour. Time later, I moved back to Minnesota. I started my shop, started acquiring a customer base. I had built a car for somebody, basically referred Tom to me. I went to Tom's shop, checked out his situation, looked at his cars, and I did work for the guy for about six months before it kind of clicked in my head that, hey, this is the same guy. Looked through my scrapbook, and I actually had a photo of me talking to Tom. Though he had many cars, that that race car was really, really, uh, all his heart was in there. That was his baby. He built it in his two-stall garage with the help from friends, but basically by himself for one year straight, only taking Christmas Day off. His intention was to, to build a race car that was street legal and drive it to Bonneville and, and go 200 miles an hour and then drive it home. Asked me to be involved in, in the race car and the whole program. I ended up taking over the whole race program and driving the car. Really blew my mind at the time. I didn't expect that conversation to really ever happen, but I was definitely all in. So I worked with Tom on that car for a few years. At the end of the day, we never did meet our 200 mile per hour breaking point, which was Tom's original goal. The car actually went out to Bonneville, I think 15 times under its own power. And if anybody out there knows cars, there's always issues. Breakdown, brain out, everything that could possibly happen, happened. On our last time of doing it, really flawless. About a half a quart of oil, and that was our only issue. That's, that's a pretty hard feat to do, to drive across the country and, and not have a breakdown and, and just put a little bit of oil in the, in the engine. We had it really dialed in, and things were really looking good. Unfortunately, Tom passed away, so. And the whole idea around the car kind of became a part of me. When Tom passed, not only did I lose a great friend, uh, I, I lost this opportunity of having the car and be able to drive it. As we know, life is short. I, I started kind of just brainstorming on how, how I could possibly build my own car and complete Tom's goal of driving out there and going 200 miles an hour and driving back. Still hard to not have Tom around. Uh, Tom and I literally talked on the phone every day. Uh, you know, you gotta move on. You can't dwell with the past. So this is how we're moving on. 